my so my name is Isa. I'm from I work for MSF and it's my uh, privilege to chair the case management working group there. So I'd like to present on behalf of my colleagues in the group. But obviously the the aim objective of our group is to contribute to the ending cholera objectives and spe specifically looking at uh, reducing the number of cholera deaths. And as it has been said already quite uh, many times today, this, uh, we are in a very shameful situation. I, I really believe that having anyone dying of cholera, it's a shame. It's a, I think it's a disgrace because no one should in the first place have cholera, but even less die of it. Then. So the way we are focusing our work is in two streams. One is really trying to improve access to care. And I think that's the, the really the, the biggest problem we have in trying to prevent cholera that is having people getting uh, treatment early. And the second one is improving clinical management uh, of patients with cholera, but this can only apply to those that actually reached care. So I think our technical space, which is focusing on this first objective, uh, it's, uh, it's great. I mean, I think uh, here we have just uh, our leverage is rather small because unfortunately many people don't reach care on time. Then. So just very briefly on some of the achievements in the, in the past 12 months, the uh, in the last year, in 2021, we've conducted a scoping review on the risk on the cholera mortality overall and the risk factors, and we really identified the elderly patients as one particular high risk group that hasn't been specifically identified as such. So the scoping review allowed us to identify them as a, a high risk group, and we uh, adapted some of the clinical guidance, in particular the one on the use of antibiotics uh, in, in cholera. Uh, and we started to work together with other groups at WHO that work particularly in the uh, clinical care for elderly patients. Um, we've been working on revising and reviewing some tools uh, to support case management, so to, to support the, uh, the response in the field in affected countries, including some training materials for clinicians. The, um, then there were some tools developed uh, for the clinical data collection, the, the case reporting forms to, to really try to to, uh, what the scoping review also showed us, in fact, is that actually we have no idea who our cholera patients are because the cholera management is so uh, basic, let's say. I mean, it's, it will save most of the lives, but in fact, the, today I think the, we, we need to, to move towards more patient-centered care and hopefully with this more detailed clinical data collection, we'll be able to uh, work further to the, uh, towards clinical recommendations. Then another big chunk of work that has been pending since years is the, the guidance to the uh, rehydration in children with severe acute malnutrition. So we, we've engaged in uh, launching a literature review that would help us uh, to, uh, towards the adjusted recommendations that we know today are not uh, optimal. Then. And then in the past year, we've organized a series of webinars uh, looking at the novel treatments and preventive methods for, for cholera. And we hope to, to work on that in, in future as well. We've had quite some challenges, the, as was mentioned by Rule and others before, there were many outbreaks uh, this year and many of our colleagues were deployed in the field and had less time available to, to work uh, for the work in the working groups. The, many of things have been stopped or almost stopped during COVID in, in clinical trials. So there's one big clinical trial on rehydration of uh, some children that is uh, taking really long time to complete that will be crucial uh, to, to adjust the, the guidance. The, and then one of the, I think like in, uh, to move on case management, we do need more data and evidence, but the, the funding for researching case management in cholera has been basically non-existent. Uh, and we have many, many questions to, uh, to answer to be able to improve the, the management. Uh, and also since uh, as a working group, we haven't met in person since 2019. So before COVID, the, we had a series of webinars, but of course it's not the same dynamic than if we sit together in, in, the, in the room and we can actually exchange and brainstorm. So some of the plans for the next 12 months, the, as I mentioned before, we would like to stay in the, in the same uh, you know, the pillars of work on uh, working on increasing access to treatment uh, care in the community. So we are looking at uh, um, launching a review of uh, different models of care in the, at the community level so that we could uh, harness those to, to be actually able to respond to uh, uh, severely dehydrated patients at the moment when the outbreak starts, not months later. Uh, uh, and uh, there is a work being 
started on uh, uh, to to formalize the guidance and uh, on the oral rehydration points in the community. The the next pillar is improving case man clinical management. The so we, we as I mentioned we launched the review on the rehydration of children with SAM. We'll be doing the similar work for the hydration in elderly. And, and we have a work ongoing on the use of antibiotics. So several groups uh, of, uh, are working on, of partners are working on the modeling and the clinical trials looking at the prophylactic use of antibiotics that can uh, then hopefully guide us in future towards uh, more uh, adapted guidance. There. But uh, all this is difficult without having good data. I think that's been mentioned several times today. We really need to have better data collection on the clinical side as well. I mean, if we don't know how many cases and deaths we have, it's difficult to calculate case fatality ratios. So as I mentioned, we, we are working on uh, improving the clinical patient records, but also with surveillance working group on having a better um, collection of uh, uh, surveillance data, so numbers and uh, segregated data to, to better adjust the, the management. And the, the, there's been many big outbreaks this year with uh, high case fatality ratios. So the reviewing the these uh, outbreaks and the, through studies or retrospective analysis or just reviews, I think will help us understand better what are the, the causes of uh, increased mortality and then better adjust the responses next time. Thank you very much.